Hi there, I am Drew Badger, the English Fluency Guide, and in this video I'm going to talk about how your religion affects your ability to speak, affects your fluency. Well, this is going to be an interesting video. I've got my whiteboard here with me, and today I've got a black marker. Yeah, because some people, I guess, couldn't read my writing. I apologize for that. Hopefully you got the message anyway. Uh, but I'm going to talk about something... Well, let me start at the beginning here. Uh, first of all, I was talking with a friend of mine recently, and he was saying, you know, kind of talking about me about what I do, and I was explaining to him about the difference between a guide and a teacher. Uh, so an English fluency guide is thinking more about the student, and a teacher is thinking more about the language. And this is a really important distinction because a teacher is really going to be thinking more about how I can kind of push the language onto a student, and this is why teachers are going to be giving you just more rules and vocabulary. And as a guide, I'm thinking more about the student, how to kind of protect the student, guide the student, and show the student really what's actually important uh, and dealing with maybe the problems that the student has and then trying to integrate the language with the student. Now, most people are pretty similar about this. Lots of students have the same kinds of problems, but most of that is because of how traditional teachers are teaching the language, and they're focused more on the language uh, than talking about how the student, or beginning with the student and thinking about how they really need to learn and what their problems are. So I was explaining this, uh, and it's important to share that with you because uh, what we're going to talk about today has very little to do with the actual learning of an English language or any language, whatever language you want to learn, or anything else that you'd like to do and be successful at. Uh, so when I talk about religion for this video, religion really refers to uh, what you believe about certain things. And so these are convictions you have or beliefs that you have. So we'll just write the word belief. Now, I always thought it was interesting when I was younger, a little kid, and first learning how to spell, I was like, huh, it's interesting that the word lie is in the word belief. <laughs> but uh, I want to talk about this because the beliefs that you have about how you learn are incredibly important to whether you become fluent or not. And it really is as strong uh, as a religion for many people, so like Christianity uh, or Islam or whatever the religion may be. I'm not really kind of focused on that kind of religion. This is more a secular religion or just thinking about the traditional things you believe. And often, as you'll see in this video, the beliefs you have about how you learn come from traditional teachers and the lessons that you have. So if you begin by thinking about the beliefs you have even before you're learning more words and grammar, it will help you uh, clarify or think about or understand what you should really be doing to become a fluent speaker. Because for almost anything that we want to do, that we want to be successful at, we are the ones who stop ourselves from doing things because of our beliefs. So I just want to just cover a few of these things, and hopefully this will become more clear as we go through the video. But this is an incredibly important thing to remember. I know many learners and many really just videos on YouTube that are teaching English, they're just going to give you, hey, here's five more phrases, or here's you know this more vocabulary or whatever, some grammar point. Like the worst is just grammar videos that show a grammar table and teach you a whole bunch of vocabulary like that. But if you have beliefs that are telling you uh, language learning is difficult or it's going to take a long time, then you're really going to struggle with that uh, no matter what you're learning with. So hopefully we can change some of those beliefs. And if you already have these beliefs, this is fantastic and that's going to lead you more to success. Many people have said this, but uh, whether you believe you can do something or you can't, you're correct. So think about that idea. Whether you believe you can do something or you can't, you're correct. So one of the beliefs, and if you have these, again, this is usually because teachers are making people believe these things the way they teach, but the first one is that fluency takes a long time. I'll write this very quickly here. So fluency takes a long time. Looks like you can see that. Uh, but the idea here that fluency takes a long time, this is a belief that people have. 
It's not true. It's a belief that people have, and I know this may be shocking to some people, especially if you've been learning for a long time and you've been struggling to speak. Oh no, like, of course, fluency takes a long time. You have to learn for 10,000 hours or whatever the rule is, something like that. This is a belief. It's not true. It's a belief. And I'm going to show you why it's just a belief now. The idea that fluency takes a long time is it really comes from people having this idea of you study for a long period of time. You continue to review things. You learn more and more and more. And at some point, I, I, it, people never can tell you how long this is. That's why there's lots of videos telling you you can get fluent in a day or you can get fluent in you know five months or 10 months or whatever it is. Uh, the reality is that fluency is actually something that it, uh, it occurs instantly and it occurs word by word or phrase by phrase. When you understand something, that's what it means to understand something fluently. And when you understand something fluently, you can use it fluently. As an example, if I'm trying to learn something in Japanese uh, and I'm trying to learn through a translation, which is what most people do, then I'm not really understanding fluently. I'm understanding through a translation, so I have to speak through a translation as well. And this is why so many people have to stop and hesitate and think about what they want to say before they say it, and then finally they say something, but it's usually not uh, correct, and they obviously feel a little bit nervous about saying that thing, and the whole conversation just doesn't flow very well because of that. So the reality is, if I if I teach you something, uh, here's just like a basic example in Japanese. If I have like, we have uh, two squares here, basically. <laughs> I'm not the greatest uh, artist, but here we have two squares over here. So I'm going to color one of these in. Now, if I were to actually teach Japanese in a Japanese lesson, I wouldn't be using any English at all. But just for the example here, uh, we can have like kudoi shikaku and shidoi shikaku. Now, just by using that kudoi shikaku and uh, shidoi shikaku, uh, you can see what's different between these two examples. So this is a black square. It's supposed to be black. It looks almost a bit more gray, but we'll just call this a black square, and this is a white square. Now, if you understand the colors, even just by listening to that, the thing that's same between these two is shikaku, which is the name of the shape. But the thing that's different is the color. So kudoi like kudo, meaning black, and shiro, meaning white. So if I use these two, you're actually learning. You might not understand everything like perfectly, but basically the idea you're connecting directly with the language, and so you learn it instantly. You've understood what shikaku means, so square, shikaku, uh, and you're learning uh, basic colors as well, so kudo and shiro for black and white. Again, it's not perfect, but it's the same way children are learning, and this is how children learn their native language. So they're learning all through their native language, and they're putting the language together like a puzzle piece. So again, we have these two beliefs, or these two ideas, about fluency. And whatever you believe is true for you, because of how you learn. So this belief here about like fluency taking a long time, it's because of the way traditional teachers teach. But a guide... What I'm doing is I'm going to help you understand the language uh, by making you kind of contrast things, keeping things very simple, only having one variable that's different, one thing that's different. So I made a whole app about this, uh, the whole Frederick app that I made to help people learn pronunciation and reading and spelling. It's all this idea. So learning everything in English, and this is the way a guide teaches, not the way a teacher teaches. But because of this difference, you have these different beliefs about how the language works. Does that make sense? So language learners typically think it takes a long time because it takes a long time. So it's it's true for them uh, as part of that kind of religion about traditional language learning. So for my religion for language learning, fluency is instant. And you build all these different things that you learn instantly together, but you're learning each one of these instantly. And that's why you can communicate fluently at, at any level. And you see this with children when they're learning a language. So my daughter, or both of my daughters, now my second daughter, she's one year old now and just start, just starting to speak, uh, but she's understanding body part names and colors and things like that. Uh, but she can use that fluently even for this limited vocabulary. But a non-native learner 
who's learning the traditional way is going to have this problem because they're they're thinking about each one of these as okay I kind of learned this but I learned just the translation of it I didn't really learn it fluently so hopefully in the future I become fluent out here but it doesn't work that way so this is a misunderstanding of how fluency develops. It's not something that happens over time. It's something that happens instantly. And the more things that you learn fluently, because you study the right way, the more you become fluent. And again, you can use this even you're using a limited vocabulary fluently, just like children do, or you're a non-native speaker having trouble using even a large vocabulary because you didn't learn any of these individual pieces fluently. Does that make sense? Hopefully this does. Uh, let me erase this. So again, it's a belief that you have about something uh, like fluency uh, needing, uh, taking a long time. <clears throat> the next one is that you need a teacher. Uh, this one is a, is a really challenging belief to get over for many students because everyone just thinks you need a teacher when you're learning uh, all throughout your life not just languages, but anything, almost always there is a teacher who is showing you how to do something rather than the kind of discovery um, or kind of discoverable learning, explorative learning that I do. So again, just using the app as an example, uh, when you're learning with that, you're teaching yourself. Uh, but in this example, when you're in the everyday world, uh, this is a great uh, proverb of, it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a village to raise a child. And what that means uh, is that like a child in a community is learning lots of things from different people. Uh, and a student in a classroom is usually learning something like from one, one teacher. And now that teacher, again, might be teaching the traditional way. They're not really helping them understand things without using translations or they're just teaching more rules and vocabulary lists that aren't really working with the brain. Uh, but in this example, for me learning Japanese, I took only four Japanese classes in an actual classroom with a teacher. And then I quit because it was so boring. It didn't work for me. I didn't, I didn't enjoy learning that way at all. And it's because of these same kind of things, more trying to teach me rules and have me remember things the way most textbooks would teach. So what I did instead is I'm actually learning uh, from many different people. Uh, and I'll, I'll get to like another thing about beliefs. Another thing about beliefs here, this is the word, one of my favorite words, excuses, excuses. So what is your excuse or, you know, talking about anyone out there uh, for not getting fluent or for not doing something? Humans are very good at coming up with excuses rather than reaching goals. So it's much easier to think of an excuse why you can't do something than to reach that goal by, you know, taking action. Uh, so people will tell me, hey, Drew, you got fluent in Japanese because your wife is Japanese. Well, that's true and not true. But uh, and again, in my case, like I, I don't really want to say this, but my wife would agree with me. She's not really a very good teacher. <laughs> uh, she kind of thinks about things like she'll often try to translate words for me uh, when I say like no 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 like tell it to me in Japanese explain it to me how you would tell a child and I'm asking in Japanese uh, but she's also saying well I'm, I'm like busy I don't have time to think about that so because uh, or just because someone is a native speaker of their language doesn't mean they're qualified to teach. And you've probably seen this, like it, like anybody can get on YouTube and teach English just because they know English, but doesn't mean they know how to teach. Anyway, what I did instead is I'm, I'm actually looking for uh, lots of different examples of how to do something like it could be from various people I meet and this is in person or online or whatever um, and I'm looking for different people using the same expression or how other people um, like maybe they're again like it could be TV shows or actual people or radio or whatever but I'm, I'm, I'm getting lots of feedback from many different people so it takes a village to teach someone how to really develop fluency because you don't want to just get it from one source. And another thing about needing a teacher, and again, there's nothing, there's nothing really wrong with having a teacher, someone to guide you, but don't depend on just one person uh, to teach you how to do something. So this is why in my lessons, I teach people, I'm, I'm giving them pieces of that, but showing how native speakers are using the language. Uh, and I'm also saying, go out and here are strategies you can use to meet native English speakers to practice with so that you have a whole community 
that it's actually teaching you the language. You're not depending on just one person uh, to get language learning lessons from. Does all this make sense? So the need for a teacher, people have been learning with teachers usually for many, many years. And even though that hasn't been successful, to, uh, successful for them, they haven't become fluent yet. They still are looking for more teachers. It's 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 like a crazy thing. Like they, it's like they've been getting beaten by teachers for a long time. I know some teachers are going to be upset at me for making this video. I apologize. I think uh, teachers are fantastic. I was a teacher for many years as well before I became a guide. Uh, but it's still the same idea. And as a teacher, you can learn how to teach in a better way that helps students discover ideas for themselves rather than try to teach them more words. But a big problem if you're looking for more of the same kind of thing. This is just a belief that you need a teacher. I don't want to uh, go through too many of these because this video is going to go too long, but I really just want to explain these uh, like in depth um, about, about the kind of reasons why people don't become fluent speakers. So I'll just give you one more, uh, and this is there no one to practice. I'll just put a P, practice with, PW. <laughs> so no one to practice with. Now this is another one. This is again a belief that people have where, hey, I have no one to practice speaking with. And again, if you believe this is true, then it is. But if you not, if you don't believe that's true, uh, so for me, even learning Japanese when I was back in the United States and early when I was learning Japanese, I spent more time living in America than I did in Japan. And I improved more when I was back in America than in Japan by just figuring out a better way to learn, uh, but also finding people to practice with. And I was living, I found people in Chicago. I found Japanese speakers in Seattle. I found Japanese speakers in, uh, where else was I? Let's see, I was in, um, even in Europe. So in London, I found Japanese speakers. In Amsterdam, I found Japanese speakers. Even on a little tiny island in Alaska, I found Japanese speakers. Isn't that crazy? Now, Japanese speakers are more difficult to find than English speakers because there are just so many English speakers around the world. But if you are, I mean, if you are anywhere, even if you're just only online, like you live on a mountain or some tiny village, if you can watch this video right now, you can connect with native English speakers. So this is a belief that people have. If you want to find people to practice speaking with, you can. It's not difficult, but you have to think like a native speaker about how you contact people rather than thinking like a student. Now, I don't want to go into too much detail about this, but this is really important. Um, just as a kind of contrast, I'll talk about uh, business beliefs in the same way. So one idea, like let's say right now the economy is not doing well because of coronavirus or whatever. Now, you can believe that. You can just say, well, the economy is like really bad, so now I, like my business must be going bad as well. Uh, or I could believe uh, maybe because of like, you know, there's like competition. Now here, here's some interesting beliefs about business, like even for me. So I, I've been teaching on YouTube for like 10 years and now a lot more people are on the platform and, and helping people learn. And I think that's great. At the same time, it could mean there's like increased competition for what I do. So there's a kind of fact about more people being able to do it, but I wouldn't use that as an excuse for not doing well or whatever. Um, because the interesting thing about business for that, like you could say, well, now there are too many people in the market. But if business is not going well, there are now maybe fewer people in the market and like a business owner is worried about that. Or if there's only the one business in the market, they think, well, my thing is too unique or different. So it can't be successful. <laughs> So some people are worried about too many people in the market. Others are worried about not enough competition in the market. Isn't that crazy? But it's all about the beliefs that you have. Now, again, I don't want to take too much time in this video explaining this, but the beliefs that you have about learning, whatever you think. So if you think about something uh, and say, like, I can't do this, like, I can't practice because I don't have anyone to practice speaking with, uh, or, or I need a teacher to get fluent, or fluency takes a long time, stop and ask, is that really true? And is there an example of someone who's done the opposite or proved that the opposite is true? And if that's the case, then likely you just have a belief and you can change that belief first and that will open up your mind to lots of opportunities. So if you think, 
Uh, I don't have anyone to practice with or there is no one around me in my community to practice speaking with. If you just switch that belief, if you think, well, maybe that's not true, then you can think, okay, maybe that's not true. And your mind begins to open up and all of a sudden you begin to find people. So because I believed Japanese speakers, like I could find them anywhere I wanted to. And if I couldn't find someone personally right where I was, I would find them online. Like, but I was going to find people. And because I believed that, I made it happen. And you can do the same thing too. So either you are good at kind of believing what's correct or you are good at making excuses. So this is a little bit of a tough love. This is a great expression for you. Tough. Let me make, make sure you can see this. Tough. Tough love. It means I'm going to be a little bit strict. Sometimes as a guide, I have to like hit people a little bit and say, stop doing that. Do this in a different way. Stop believing things that stop you from getting fluent. Does all this make sense? All right. I don't want to take too much time in this video, but it's a uh, very important video and hopefully this makes sense. If you have other beliefs and you want to argue with me in the comments, go ahead and post them down below. But if you see a comment below that says, I can't do something because of something, give them a counter example. Say like, well, I live in this country too, and I found people to practice speaking with. I'm not going to tell you how to like solve every single thing. The point is think about the bigger idea of how to get fluent by thinking first about your beliefs before you think about more vocabulary and grammar. All right. Well, that has been me, the English Fluency Guide, explaining more about this. Very important idea. Remember to take your time. Go back and think about what beliefs you have that are stopping you from getting fluent. Because all you have to do is reverse them. Try thinking the opposite. Even if you don't believe it, it might be hard at first. But just try believing the opposite. Because a negative belief won't help you at all. So try the opposite. Makes sense, right? All right. Well, that's the end of this video. If you have enjoyed it, do click that like button. Be sure to subscribe. You can click on the link at the end of this video. And if you'd like to learn more about how I guide learners to fluency, where I'm talking not just about the language and all the great phrases and expressions that I help people learn, but thinking about these kinds of things too, you can click on the link in the upper right of this video or on the link in the description below this video. And if you'd like to continue learning with the English Fluency Guide right here on YouTube, just do these three simple things right now. 1. Click on this link to subscribe to my YouTube channel for over 500 free videos. 2. Click on this link to download my number one ebook guide to fast fluency free. And 3. Click here to watch the most popular video on English fluency here on YouTube.